Some call the place we're headed today the best little day trip in Texas. And if you know what I'm talking about, then you know we're headed to LaGrange. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. LaGrange sits in the day trip sweet spot, an hour or so east of Austin, an hour and a half west of Houston, and just two hours from San Antonio. Three cities, one day trip. LaGrange is a city with a reputation. In fact, as soon as I mentioned LaGrange, many of your minds immediately went to Sheriff Burt Reynolds and his lady friends. Hey, hey, them's classy girls. Sheriff said so. <laughs> or maybe it was Dolly Parton playing Miss Mona, the sweetest and toughest madam in Texas. Or maybe both. Hey, man, I like your uh, dress. Yeah. <laughs> both of them working hard to tend to a little chicken ranch. Hey, who let all these chickens out the ranch? Get back in there, Brent. Get back in your corral. Chickens everywhere. Get back. Come on. Come on. Get back. No? Well, then maybe you thought of these guys. Bearded Texas rocker ZZ Top. Singing a little ditty about some nice gals they met in LaGrange. But either way, LaGrange is a city with history, reputation included, and I'm eager to dive into it. But first, I think I'll dive into the entire reason LaGrange was built here, and that's the Colorado River. To hit the water, we're first hitting Camp Lone Star, a Lutheran camp that also happens to be LaGrange's premier canoe outfitter. Okay, so this is Patrick, and we're down here on the Colorado. Tell us a little bit about what we're about to do. Um, well, we've got some canoes. We're gonna head back to Camp Lone Star's property. It takes a little over an hour, but it's a real gentle ride, and uh, the water's really nice today. Yeah, beautiful day. This short river trip basically starts on one side of LaGrange and winds around the city to the other. But with all the trees and serene beauty of the Colorado River, you have no idea that you're passing right by the heart of town. And what I love so much about this trip is how easy it is. It's great for the beginner paddler and even better for the never paddled in my life paddler. Camp Lone Star does all the hard work. In fact, I might just stop paddling altogether. Ah, who am I kidding? I love this stuff. This stretch of river epitomizes the Colorado in these parts. Slow and steady, beautiful and quiet. Do you hear that? That's the sound of nothing. That's pretty awesome. But of course, there's always the amusement of the native wildlife. As you see, the exotic wildlife will let you get right up close. It's amazing. He was definitely a bull. But really what this river's all about is sweet Texas sunshine and relaxation. Well, that is until you find the rope swing. Yeah, I gotta say that if I were one of the original settlers in Texas, there's a very good chance I would have ended up on the banks of the Colorado River. But we can't stay on the water for too long. Much awaits us in LaGrange. And it looks like this is our takeout. Man, now that's the way to start a day. Easy flow in Colorado River. But we got a lot left to do, so we better get back on the road. All right, let's hit town. LaGrange is the county seat of Fayette County. It's known for many things, including its huge towering oaks. But it's known even more for the rich culture it provided Texas. So it was the river that brought the people, but it was the people that brought the culture. And in LaGrange, that culture was and is Czech. To embark upon our cultural journey, we're headed to the Texas Czech Heritage and Cultural Center, smack in the heart of Texas Czech country. So this is Janice Hernser, but if I spoke Czech, I would say it. Hernsish. <laughs> Hernsish. <laughs> I'm gonna let you do that. That's okay. <laughs> well, thanks for having us here. Tell me a little bit about why Texas? Why the Czech culture here in Fayette County? Well, the, the Czechs came from the old country, Czech lands, because of famine, bad crops, but also 
they were promised free land in Texas. And, and so free land was like free gold. Oh yes, uh, someone lied to them and told them there was beautiful black rich land here. <laughs> oh, and it no. turned out to be, no, it was- Cactus it, and stuff yes. like that. Oh. That small point aside, once the checks started coming, they stuck here in Texas. 80% of Fayette County was check. Really? Wow, mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. And that's a check mark not easily erased. Pardon the pun, please. Many of the original Czech homes have even been moved here to the cultural center's grounds for touring. And the oldest of them is the Meagle House. And who better for a tour than one of the Meagles themselves? This house was built by uh, my great-grandfather, built in 1890, and five children and great-grandma and grandpa lived here. Uh-huh, wow. Yep, tight living, close family. And for the Meagles, that is especially true. There are over 5,000 of us. Oh, wow. The center also has a number of exhibits. One of the houses is full of Czech music. Most everything in this building has been donated. These are instruments. Uh, some of them brought them from the old country. Many of the Czechs who came to Texas, they started with orchestras and then they became polka bands. And then of course, there's the Czech language. Vizdi Kajic se Vecher Slim Viga Lalika Matička Ma Sediva. And shall we not forget, Czech clothing. You know, even though I'm not Czech, I think I'd look good in one of these. What do you think? I think so. Yeah. I can't believe they actually let me put one of these things on. You know, I've always been Czech, but now I'm a Czech Czech. <laughs> While I do look quite nice, I don't think I'll be playing tuba in a Czech band anytime soon. <laughs> However, I do love the Czech culture for many reasons, including the reason that I love to eat. So many of our traditions can be traced back to the Czech and German immigrants that settled Central Texas, but first and foremost among all of them, and one near and dear to my heart is the age-old tradition of barbecue. Let's partake in that tradition, shall we? So for lunch, we're headed to Prowsey Meat Market. And yes, you read that sign right, since the 1890s. Now, Prowsey's does have a front door, but if you want to experience this barbecue joint like a true local, you gotta follow me. And through the back door, true barbecue greatness awaits. You feel it in the air. The kind that's been smoking for four generations in this German family. And today, run by Prowsey family members, Brian, Kathy, Mark, and then Gary, who I asked for a history lesson. This is a first picture of the Prowsey meat market. Uh, the two gentlemen in there are great-grandfather Arnold Prowsey and my grandfather Glenn when he was a teenager. Our great-grandfather Arnold actually started working in Fedville, Texas uh, in the 1880s as a young boy and learned the meat trade over there. Okay. And married and moved his family here to LaGrange in the early 1900s. 1904 is about when we got the first records. Huh. Grandfather Glenn had three boys. That's the third generation of Prowseys that took over the meat market. And we're still still rolling. Yeah. After all these years. After all these years. <laughs> That's saying something. The thing that uh, I that got me the most satisfaction was that I could be with my father and my brother and my cousins and my uncles and I can work with them and be with them every day and, and, and that, that's what family is all about. That, yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's kind of why I did it. <laughs> and it takes a very special family to work together like this every day, especially with so many knives around. But oddly enough, the man behind their pit isn't a Prousey, by birth anyway, but he might as well be, Mr. Monroe Schubert. He's 77 years old. He's a barbecue man. Yeah. He comes in at 7 in the morning, works till 2 every day. He's, he, he, he's, as, he's tough as they come. <laughs> yeah, he knows something about me. Well, how long have you been doing this? I don't know. I've been here since 69, 42 years, but I started as a janitor. Really? Yeah. And now you're the man in charge of the barbecue. That's quite a promotion. What all, what all, you, what all do you cook? Briskets? Briskets, pork. Little steaks sometimes. Okay, sausages. Yeah. How do you do it? You just got to feel it? I got a feeling for it. I mean, I go by instinct. I mean, I learned myself. They asked me one day, they said, why do you wrap the stuff? Make it tender. And that's it? Keep it moist. Watch it catch on fire too. <laughs> well, I'd better let Mr. Monroe get back to his work so I can deal with this starving stomach. 
And it's a good thing this meat market has no shortage of meat. Locally raised beef, we get all our cattle about 10 miles from here in a little town called Holman. We kill all, all our own meat, process it ourselves. How much, how much of this will be gone by the end of the day? Pretty much all of it. Really? Now, a steak sounds pretty good, but let's be honest, I can't pass up barbecue. Oh, a little word to the wise when stepping up to the counter. Don't order a sandwich here. Prowsey's is a meat market, pound by smoky pound. A slice of the pork roll, a few slices of brisket, and a sausage. Oh yeah, thank you much. Uh, thank you. I've been to a lot of barbecue joints, but this is new for me. Vinegar to put on your barbecue. It must be pretty popular, they chained it to the table. How, 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 how. Look at this plate of barbecue. I got some of the homemade sausage, the house pork roll. It's actually the pork shoulder just rolled so it all stays together because it is juicy and tender. That is delicious. It's got fat all rolled in there around that pork. There, none of that juice leaks out. Ma'am. But I guess I should try it with this vinegar that they got. I might mix it with a little bit of this right here. Kind of creating my own little Carolina style barbecue sauce. There's vinegar. That's good. It's like it takes me out of Texas and it puts me somewhere in Georgia or Tennessee. Pork and vinegar barbecue. Time for some beef. That's good. The, the meat is tender, covered in like a perfectly rendered fat all around the outside, sort of crusty on the outside. Mmm. How good. You know, in 100 years or so, you learn a little bit about barbecue. And these guys know about barbecue. They gave me silverware, but I'm just going to dig in with my hands. So it's quite clear that the settlers of LaGrange and Fayette County could eat and still can. But another thing the Germans and Czechs do well is drink. To see this side of the culture, we're headed to one of the oldest breweries in Texas, which also happens to be a state park. No, the state of Texas isn't into brewing beer, but they are into preserving its history. For a tour of the brewery, I found park superintendent Dennis Smith. Chet, this is the ruins of the Kreischer Brewery. Uh, it's one of the first commercial breweries in Texas. Mr. Kreischer was originally a stonemason, um, built this brewery and changed his profession to a brewmaster about the time of the Civil War. Wow, so the fact that he knew what he was doing with stone is the reason this thing's even lasted as long as it has for right. a hundred. Right. It was originally a three-story structure. Um, he also had a, um, a beer garden up here at the brewery. He had a dance pavilion up here on the bluff as well had a beer hall downtown of his own, <laughs> oh, wow. uh, and sold to several different pubs around the area. So it was, it was very popular. Yeah. Built in the 1860s, Mr. Kreischer sold beer by the barrel, and by 1879 was the third largest beer producer in Texas. We'll go down and walk down the trail, and we'll go down into the, the, the bottom room. And the Kreischer Brewery was massive for its time, and quite advanced. Using only natural air and water flow, Mr. Kreischer could drop the temperature in this fermenting room to 40 degrees. That's without electricity. This is quite an incredible operation. It's a mass scale thing for a small town like LaGrange. Right. So a lot of people must have must have really wanted it. Yeah, Mr. Kreischer was about much more than just a good time. To Mr. Kreischer, I would raise a pint if I could right now. <laughs> That's true. The Kreischers lived right above their brewery and their private home is open for tours. Now this was the way to live back then. However, the history of the Kreischa family isn't the only important part of the park, as the park holds an incredible story that goes beyond German and Czech history to a purely Texan history. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. You see, just because Texas defeated Mexico at San Jacinto didn't mean Mexico just went away. They still wanted Texas back, and the story of two particular incidents is held here on Monument Hill. Monument Hill site, um, we have a tomb and a monument here. Um, there are 52 Texas heroes buried here from the days of the Texas Republic, back when Texas was its own nation. 36 of these men died in the Dawson Massacre. Uh, most of those men were from LaGrange and from Fayette County. Um, they're led by a man named Nicholas Dawson, who was their captain, and were intercepted by a portion of the Mexican army and were massacred, which led into the Mir expedition to um, push the Mexican army out of Texas. These men um, you know, gathered together and marched down into Mexico and were in a battle in the little town of Mir, Mexico. Um, they were taken prisoner after they surrendered at the battle. Um, they were marched down into the, to Mexico. Santa Ana ended up ordering decimation or decimado which was a Roman army custom to remove one-tenth of the population. And to decide which one of every 10 men were gonna be executed, they had to draw beans and basically had a death lottery. 
They wow. put 159 white beans and 17 black beans into a jar and made these men draw off their lives. And those that drew black beans were executed that night. The black bean lottery is perhaps one of the most dramatic stories in Texas history. 159 white beans and 17 black beans. It's crazy to think that something as important as life and death could come down to something as random as chance. 17 just plain unlucky Texans were killed, which had me wondering, well, how would I do if I were faced with such odds? So the crew and I set up a little experiment. Looks like we'll live to day trip another day. Finding stories like this about men willing to die for their Texas makes me pretty proud to call this soil home. All this Czech, German, and Texas history in LaGrange, and all folks remember is the chicken ranch. But if you're curious, that famous bordello is no longer around. After being shut down in the 70s, the house moved to Dallas to become a restaurant. But the house burnt down, leaving nothing behind but the legend. LaGrange is making new history these days, whether it's in quilting at the Texas Quilting Museum, which I found out isn't just for old ladies. Hey, I know that guy. Or whether it's making history by establishing Texas's oldest functioning meadery. And I didn't say meat, I said mead, as in Vikings, Beowulf, the drink of the dragon slayers. Mead, boys! Wait, 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 but stop right there, as there's much more to me than battle axes and hats with horns on them. Ah! Ah. And the Rowan Meadery is just the place to learn about it. Okay, so this is John and Wendy Rowan, the mead makers behind the Rowan Meadery. I don't know if that's what you call it yourselves. So what do you call yourselves? Thirsty, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is mead? It's honey wine. It's wine made from fermenting honey. But it takes lots of different permutations. So you can have fruit meads, you can have spice meads, you can have traditional mead, which is just the fermented honey. So that's what's in this tank is the Medovina, which is a Czech style mead. You just said it's a Czech style mead. Yes. So when I hear mead, I always, you know, immediately jump to like uh, Viking Renaissance Festival, Beowulf, you know, slay the dragon type stuff. But that's not right. Well, it absolutely is right, but it's more complicated <laughs> than that. <laughs> what, what's really interesting about mead or honey wine is that it predates every other fermented beverage known to mankind. That means that almost every culture, including the Czechs, have had a chance at mead making. And that also includes the Rowans, who are now putting a Texas spin on an ancient beverage. Making mead is similar to making a traditional wine. And once you get it down to the same sugar concentration of grapes, then the process is the same. We use the same yeast, the same really big expensive tanks. <laughs> and it really is a really, really simple process. It's honoring the honey. And that's exactly where every glass of mead starts. So where's the best honey in the world? I think it's Texas wildflower honey. Really? Yes, I'm totally biased. But you know, Texas is kind of scrappy, and <laughs> this honey is too. And I just think as it ferments, it develops it, these amazing tastes. Add Texas fruits like peaches to Texas honey, and you have yourself a thousand year old beverage, Texas style. Oh, it's great. That's delicious. It's refreshing and chilled. Are people surprised at, at, at mead? They come in and they're very surprised. You know, a lot of people ask if we have a red or a white <laughs> and uh, what grapes are in here. And we have to explain that there are no grapes. I, I think it's a perfect wine for Texas, honestly. Because of the heat we have here on a regular basis, it's a nice, light grape wine alternative. I can't really imagine Vikings drinking something this sweet. Like, <laughs> I always thought, you know, what they drank tasted sort of like pieces of old ships or something. Like, this is. They're a little softer than we thought they were. Yeah. I, I think so. I think they're very misunderstood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cheers to that, guys. Thank you all very much. And I must say that just like the Vikings, mead is a bit misunderstood too. So raise a glass, fellow Texans, and help bring Texas mead out of the dark ages and into the modern era. Of course, you can still dress up like a Viking if you want to. OK, by my watch, this day is slipping away. But I've still got one very important check thing left to do. So we're headed to the nearby town of Ellinger. All right, check checklist. Dress like them, check. Barbecue like them, check. Drink mead like them, check. But there's still one very important check check mark left. 
And that's exactly why we're headed to Hrushka's. Yep, it's a gas station, but in truth, it's so much more. Okay, so here's a little Czech pronunciation for you. Evidently, the H on the front is silent, and this little boomerang thing over the S makes a shh sound. Rushkas, Rushkas. So where, sh where should I go get the kolaches? Oh, over there. Thank you. Since 1912, Rushkas has been serving Ellinger, and 100 years later, it's still around to stuff customers' bellies with the classic Czechy goodness known as the kolache. Oh, check these out. Again, pardon the pun. This is Kolachi Baker Mary. What's the V stand for? Vrajel. Vrajel, Mary Vrajel. Yeah. So you must be Czech. Yes, sir, I am. <laughs> but you make kolaches yeah. every day. Yes, sir. Well, man, they look delicious. So tell me a little bit about a kolache. Is it sweet? Is it salty? Is it both? What, what is a kolache? It's sweet. So while often confused, the meat sausage type are technically Klobas Snickies. Ah, but as long as you're buying them and eating them, Rushkas won't be correcting you. Did you grow up eating kolaches? Is this like comfort food for you, sort of? It was always around, but it wasn't like this. You know, we didn't make that many different kind. It was just a prune, cottage cheese, something simple. And a lot of old timers, that's the ones they yeah. want, huh? and poppy seed. Of course, Rushkas still has the classic, but the modern times have brought much change to kolache fillings. How many flavors of kolaches? Do you know? uh, we make about 16 different fruit flavors. Okay. And the meat kind, let's see, about 12. Okay, I'm gonna try one. What should I get? Oh, uh, cream cheese cherry. That one sounds amazing. Yeah. Maybe I should just get a dozen. Maybe so. All right. <laughs> Check like a it. couple of dozen. Yeah. Check my pulse, because I think I've died and gone to check heaven. Yeah, but before I make a meal on nothing but bread and gooey fillings, better throw some protein in there, as this spot is quite famous for a purely Texan classic, the cheeseburger. <laughs> Ellinger at Rushka's is the best burger you'll ever eat. Well, so what makes it so amazing? They use iceberg lettuce. Oh, None is. of this fancy schmancy stuff. <laughs> iceberg lettuce and freshly sliced tomatoes. And the, and the, the patties are not preformed. They actually form the patty. So I mean, you're making my mouth water we'll right now. We'll go get you a it. burger. They're going to they're gonna close the grill soon. Uh-oh. Better get. You know day trippers got to eat. The Fruska's two-course meal. Cheeseburger in one bag, kolaches in the other. I know I'm supposed to start on this bag first, but after all that kolache talk, this is where I'm going, right here. But when she said it was the classic, I had to get it. The prune kolache. I mean, the dough is soft and buttery. And the prunes, well, I feel more regular already. All right, actually, mm. it's quite delicious. I'm officially ruining my dinner. Sorry, Mom. Time to get to the main course. Mm. Look at this. Everything a cheeseburger should be. Delicious, moist beef, toasted bun, lettuce, pickles, tomatoes. I mean, it's mm, classic mm, burger. Mm. I don't know if this is Czech, but it's dang delicious. What a day. The Czech motherland may be across the pond, but our Texas version is much closer. And from the history to the food to the people, LaGrange is a day trip you definitely need to check out. So I think I can officially check the kolache box and check off the fact that this was one incredible day trip. So I'll see all y'all out on the road. Bye con Dios, amigos. Or, as the Czechs say, spawn him, bow him, amigos. Dress like a Czech? Czech. Eat barbecue like a Czech? Czech. <laughs> the hoo. I like I don't, The hoo. <laughs> Eat like him. I think I can finally check that kolache. <laughs> It wouldn't come out again. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> All right. I've never been on TV either before. <laughs> this is the Prousy brother they keep in the back. <laughs> yeah, right. Check it out. A Texas spiny lizard. Hey, buddy, you want to go on the rest of the day trip with us? Yeah? OK. Stick you right in here. <laughs> And is he on me still? Friends, friends, friends. Ah. Adios, amigo. The haiku to the kolache. Warm, pruny, bready 
Kolachi from Kruska's gas. Make my tummy fat. Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app at Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment. Let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all of your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas-made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigas.